you ever feel lost or stuck? Like you don't know where you're headed or don't know what to do? When I look back over the past year, I have definitely felt lost and stuck as we've wrestled with the ramifications of COVID-19. But if we're being honest, we all experience times when we feel lost. Whether we're unsure about tensions with our friends, uh, we feel stuck in rhythms and patterns of behavior that we don't wanna be doing, or what we're gonna do after high school. We can all use some clarity and guidance in helping us figure out what we're supposed to do. This month, we'll be looking at stories in scripture where people felt stuck or unsure and needed some guidance to help them as we focus on this month's spiritual discipline of guidance. I will instruct you and teach you about the direction you should go. I'll advise you and keep my eye on you. Don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement must be controlled with a bit and a bridle. Don't be anything like that. We've all met those people who think they know it all. You know who I'm talking about. They're the ones that are so sure they know everything about everything. They won't listen to anyone else because they already have it all figured out. They just are not teachable. When I think about being teachable or not, I think of trying to help my son with long division in elementary school. I had learned how to do long division in a very different way than he was being taught. And we probably spent a good 30 minutes telling each other how wrong the other's method was. And by telling, I mean starting with a conversation, then raising our voices, maybe some crying and eventually some yelling. Neither of us was willing to learn from the other one or to even see that they may have a different but still valid way of looking at the problem. His way worked and my way worked, but we were each so intent on being right, it turned into a fight that caused hurt feelings, but did nothing to get him anywhere with his homework. Let's compare how we handled that situation with teachable people. Teachable people are open to new ideas and opinions. Teachable Christians are willing to learn from God no matter who the teacher or what the experience may be. They are the ones who ask questions because they know they can learn more about God through listening to others. They listen more than they talk and know better than to trust snap judgments. They are willing to hear God in unexpected people or events and are open to God changing their plans. They are humble enough to know that they don't have all the answers. So what happens when we aren't teachable when it comes to God? How does that affect our relationship with God? Imagine feeling like you know everything there is to know about God. Like our infinite, all-powerful grace and mercy-filled creator is only as big as what we know of God at this very moment. Well, that's pretty much what we're saying to God when we stop listening and learning new ways of seeing God and God's truth. So many people treat God like God should fit inside a box that they prepare. They want God to think the way they do, to act in a way they can predict, and never to ask them to step outside their comfort zone. If something about God doesn't fit inside their box, they shut it out and shut down the conversation. Jonah is such a good example of someone who was unteachable. When God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell them to change, Jonah doesn't want to do it and heads in the opposite direction. Even after God has him swallowed up by a great fish and he agrees to do what God has asked him to do, he's angry about it. He's angry because he doesn't like that God is willing to forgive the people of Nineveh. In fact, after preaching on God's behalf and seeing the city turn from their evil ways, Jonah complains to God. That is why I was so quick to flee Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah was so set against God being compassionate to people that Jonah didn't like, that he went as far from Nineveh as possible to avoid it happening. And he was so reluctant to accept this good thing God was doing that he would rather die than soften his heart towards the people of Nineveh. I think we all have those moments in our lives too when we've held so tightly to our ideas of what is true, who is worthy of saving, or what God thinks. We're so sure that we have God all figured out and that God fits neatly in our little box that we fail to recognize that God is bigger than we can imagine. 
We refuse to believe that who God loves or what God asks us to do might surprise us. When we leave ourselves open to God, to the possibility that God can teach us new things and act in ways we aren't expecting, our relationship with God grows stronger. When I think of someone in scripture that showed a posture of being teachable, it was Nicodemus. All right, quick context. Nicodemus was a Pharisee at the time of Jesus' ministry, and the Pharisees were not at all fans of Jesus. Jesus was a threat to their power and preached about God doing new things in new ways. In fact, Jesus calls them out on being unteachable when he says in John 5, 39, examine the scriptures since you think that in them you have eternal life. They also testify about me, yet you don't want to come to me so that you can have life. Their entire lives were built on fitting God inside the box they built using scripture. But Jesus is telling them that he is what all those scriptures have been about all along. They are so intent on the scriptures that they can't recognize the word made flesh in front of them. Now back to our regularly scheduled teaching already in progress. But while the other Pharisees seem to just be getting mad at all Jesus is doing, Nicodemus was paying attention and letting God teach him. In John 3, 2, we see Nicodemus come to Jesus and admit he believes Jesus was sent by God. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Rather than dismissing Jesus because the God Jesus was sharing didn't fit exactly who he thought God was, Nicodemus let God guide him to a new truth. He and Jesus have a conversation about how to gain eternal life that includes the crux of what God is doing through Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. These words that we hold so dear were spoken to Nicodemus because he had the faith and the courage to be teachable. He let God guide him to seek out Jesus and was rewarded with truth. We know that Nicodemus did learn from this interaction with Jesus because we see him push for the Pharisees to hear Jesus out before condemning him. And then we see him again at the tomb. He, along with Joseph of Arimathea, prepare the body of Jesus for burial. Nicodemus brought 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe, which was quite a lot and very expensive. Though scripture doesn't expressly say that Nicodemus believed in Jesus, his actions certainly point to a changed heart and a belief in the new thing God was doing. Now, it's hard to change our long-held beliefs, our traditions, or what we know to be true. Growth is hard, messy, and painful, but it's necessary. Think about the things you believed or the way you did things when you were a little kid. Imagine if those never changed, if you never learned anything new past what you knew at six years old. So why is it any different at 15, 40, or even 80? Why is it any different when it comes to knowing God? We need to be willing to stop and ask ourselves if there is something new we could learn. Do we have this all figured out? Do we have all the answers? Or what if I'm wrong? Being teachable means we can accept God's guidance in our lives. It means that we can let God change our minds or open our eyes to new truths, even through long familiar scripture. It takes away the fear that comes with not knowing everything and lets us focus on what God is doing in our lives and in the world around us. Being teachable gives us the opportunity to be part of those things God is doing rather than just watching them happen. This month, we're talking about guidance as a spiritual discipline. But like all the other spiritual disciplines, guidance has to be practiced. That means that we have to choose to be teachable every day open to new possibilities of what we could learn. This week, keep your eyes and your heart open for ways that God may be trying to get your attention. Ask God to show you what needs to change, to give you the courage to make those changes and the faith you need to be okay with it. Being teachable is the first step in letting God guide your life. Just like you know more now than you did when you were little, you will know more about God 10 years from now than you do today but only if you are willing to learn and grow. Once we are ready to learn, then we can start to figure out how we determine what is right and move forward. We'll talk about discernment the next time we meet. But until next time, receive this prayer for guidance from the Spiritual Disciplines Handbook. Lord, I am willing to receive what you give, release what you take, lack what you withhold, 
Do what you require and be who you desire. Amen. Thank you.